The Rafael or Dassault Rafael is one absolute amazing fighter and is a favorite by many different countries and organizations around the world. Today, we are going to look at it and learn as much as we can about this fighter and get an understanding of how it works. Today, we dive into some of its history of how it was made and how it performs in today's world and who is using it as of 2019. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to FTD Facts channel. We're looking at people, cultures, places, and military gear and all that hardware and stuff. Now, today we're looking at the Rafael Dassault. Love this fighter. I think it's sleek. I think it looks great. I think it's just, you know, it's just amazingly cool looking fighter. Before I get in this video, just want to let you guys know if you're liking this stuff, give it a big thumbs up because then I know to do more. And just letting you know, this video is brought to you by good old fashioned grammarly.com. But we'll get into that a little bit later because right now I want to talk about France's greatest fighter. The Rafale d'Assault is, yes, of course, a French fighter, meaning basically gust of wind or burst of fire. Don't ask me which one is the actual translation because I don't really actually know. Pretty much, this is a twin engine fighter that ain't just an interception, but like most modern generation fighters, it can do multiple things such as interception, as well as ground assault, reconnaissance, and anything that a fighter needs. The fighter itself was created by the Dassault Aviation Corporation, which is a company that's been around since 1929, and they pretty much, basically, you know, they know their fighters, they ain't joking around. Similar to a lot of modern generation fighters, it's also got its start back in the 1970s. As always, when it comes to a new fighter, France specifically was looking for a new fighter to replace the old ones, something that was more cost effective, maybe better in terms of combat, those sort of things. Basically, during that time, France had what was known as the Dassault Mirage 4, which was a good aircraft, a supersonic bomber. As well, they had the Mirage 3, which was their interceptor, and the Mirage 5, which was classified not as an interceptor, but as an attack craft. And for them, they were pretty much like, I'm pretty sure we could get one fighter to do all these roles put into one. And with that, around that time, there were a lot of other fighters that France was using. For example, they had the Mirage F1 and the Dassault Dornier, or better known as the Alpha Jet. There was also the Mirage 2000, which is pretty much the first real multi-role aircraft for the country. And its first flight was in 1978, with it first being introduced in 1984. Now, as much as the Mirage 2000 was a good fighter, yes, they did need to upgrade it as soon as it came out. There was a lot of advancement with other aircrafts around the 1970s, and yeah, you just always needed to compete. With that, Dassault ended up joining the European Collaborative Fighter Program, which actually didn't go far, because this eventually ended up with France joining in a program with Germany, the UK, Spain, and a few others, which actually led to the Eurofighter Typhoon. However, Dassault wasn't really happy with with what was going on within that program so they were like no nope, we're gonna leave we've got our own requirements and you guys just aren't meeting them so we're gonna make our own fighter now for the initial development they called this plane a technology demonstrator or the avion de combat experimental or avx for short now it first flew on july 4th 1986 crazy part is although this prototype meant the beginning of production in 1986 Interesting enough to know that the Dassault Rafale wasn't introduced until 2001. It had a long, long process in development. One thing that I found really interesting in its development, it originally used the F-18 General Electric F-404 engine. The engine it uses now is known as the SNE CMA-88 engine. The thing with this engine, it was going to simply be used as a technology demonstration and had no intent to be used in this aircraft for a long term. But however, its initial tests unfortunately didn't have this engine within it, simply because the engine wasn't ready, it hadn't gone through enough trials to be deemed safe or reliable. And although the Rafale had gone through multiple testing, it wasn't until 1990 that they replaced the left engine of this jet with the new 88 engine and it managed to get to speeds of Mach 1.4. And therefore, from that point on, they just decided, yeah, it's a good enough engine, we're going to throw this in the fighter. Now, the other thing is, you may be wondering, why did it take so long to introduce this aircraft? I mean, it's been in production since 1986, but 2001, yeah, it took a while, a long, long, long while. 
Well, originally France had a deal of $30 billion to have at least 330 fighters for 1996. But because of the collapse of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union, it changed where money was going within the country. To add to that, with these delays, it made the fighter more expensive, and France decided instead it would upgrade on some of its older planes instead of replace them. However, by 1991, this is where they brought in the B and the C prototypes. The B was the two-seater, and the C was a more stealthy version than the A. There was also the M which was made for the Navy. The funny part is with the M is that they wanted it to be tested to be able to handle the catapult launch system. The downside is was France didn't have a testing facility for this so it had to be done at Lakehurst Maxfield in New Jersey. Now by 1995 things were getting a little bit better for this fighter. This is because France had many of its divisions planning to purchase this fighter but because of economic issues around around that time, it put the fighter on hold again. This didn't pick up until 1997 when France was like, yeah, okay, we'll purchase about 48 of these for the Navy. And with that in mind, the very first version to be delivered to France was the Navy variant, which was delivered somewhere in 2001. As a matter of fact, the Air Force itself didn't get their versions until years later, roughly around 2006. And a side note, the first Rafale to ever have its engine replaced by a foreign navy at sea was on the American USS Truman, and this happened in 2010. Besides France, you may be wondering who operates these aircraft. Well, Egypt became the first international buyer. Qatar also jumped in buying these aircrafts in 2015. Now, as for India, uh, there's been a lot of back and forth with this country. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of controversy over the purchasing of this fighter. But however, in 2019, they recently stated that they wanted them to be part of the defense against Pakistan's F-16s. There's also been many bids from multiple other countries that weren't successful and some interests from other places around the world. And with that, although this aircraft has only been around since 2001, it has proved very effective in the field. For example, it's been a part of many modern operations such as Enduring Freedom, which was in Afghanistan. It's also been seen in Iraq and operations in the Arabian Sea, even places like Libya, Mali, Syria, and a few more. In terms of variants, the Dassault Rafale has 12 of them. Now, yes, there are some versions that are particularly made for certain countries such as India and Egypt. For example, in Egypt, they have two major versions, which are the single and two-seaters. These are known as the EM and the DM. India also has its single and two-seater. These are known as the DH and EH. The main ones that are used now within France are the C version, which is the single seat, and the B single seat variant for the French Air Force. On top of that, there is the M, which is for the Navy. There have been others, which are prototypes or canceled or future variants. As for specifications, this is kind of my favorite part. You get into some of the numbers. Let's take a look. As you guys already know, this is a single or two-seater aircraft. The length of this aircraft comes in at approximately 15.27 meters with a wingspan of 10.80 meters. As for height, it's a little taller than some other aircrafts coming in at 5.34 meters. When it comes to loaded weight, however, it can carry up to 33,000 pounds with a maximum takeoff weight of 54,000 pounds for the B, C, and D variant. Maximum speed, now of course this changes depending on the altitude. For high altitude, it can go approximately Mach 1.8, which is roughly about 1,912 kilometers per hour. For low altitudes, it comes in at Mach 1.1, which is roughly 1,390 kilometers per hour. For the combat radius, it's obviously greater than 1,852 kilometers. However, this is based off of one penetration mission with two CTFs and three tanks. For service ceiling, however, it can go up to, if not more than 50,000 feet. Now, as for guns, this is the best part. Basically, automatically on it, it has a 1x30 millimeter GIAT auto cannon with about 125 rounds. For hard points though, unlike some other aircrafts, depending on version, it actually changes. Your standard Air Force variants can have up to 14 hard points, whereas the Rafale M Navy version has 13. These aircrafts can fire air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground, air-to-ship, and of course nuclear missiles and other things of that nature. 
However, when it comes to these fighters, there's been only about 175 of these made as of 2019, with more being built on the way. And as for the whole thing, when it comes to its production cost, it comes in at approximately 45.9 billion euros or 62.7 billion US dollars as of 2013. For your individual price tag, your Rafale B version comes in at 74 million euros as of 2013. The C variant comes in at 68.8 million as of 2013. And the M variant comes in at the highest for a Rafale at 79 million as of 2011. So there you go, guys. That's it. That is me talking about the Rafale or the Dassault Rafale. I think it's just an amazingly beautiful fighter. What are your thoughts on this? Is this one of your favorite fighters? And yeah, guys, if I missed any great facts or you yourself might be just a pilot and you know more about these aircrafts or you're an engineer, feel free to leave it down there in the comments section below. I always urge people to read the comments and, you know, just see, make sure some of our Facts are absolutely up to date. Things change over time. Either way, guys, before you get out of here, I want you guys to check out our really awesome playlists, especially if you guys like fighters, because hey, we got a lot of stuff that we've done for you guys that I think you guys will really, really like. And of course, before you get out of here, be sure to check out Grammarly.com. You know, you guys can download it on your phone. It can improve your grammar. I know I need it all the time. So other than that, you guys have yourself a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, so here are those playlists that I was telling you about. By the way, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, as I said. And if you're here for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But you guys have yourself a good one. We'll catch you later.